Well, hello and welcome to this week's photography podcast. Um, this week is the last one um, before we take a break over the summer. But don't worry, there'll be a few part twos um, that we've got coming out um, maybe every couple of weeks or so. But we are definitely going out on a high because I want to introduce you this week. Well, I think I think actually probably certainly top three of my favourite people we've had on here so far. Uh, fantastic vlogger. Um, and actually a really good photographer, really good photographer, but although you don't see much of it on his channel, it's uh, it's Glenn Chapman, a.k.a. Black Crag. So welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. No, welcome. It's, it's it's great to have you on. You better be you better be good now, mate. After that build up, do you know what I mean? Because that was a serious build up. Let's all go quiet now. <laughs> I know. I I hate stuff like this. All these people looking. Oh, look at me! <laughs> Don't ask me anything. <laughs> Honestly, if you if you've watched previous episodes, you'll know that I've I've often moaned about the Lake District, and when Darren suggested, Darren moaned. said, oh, "Well, sort of not moaned, but I've sort of said it's it's." It's a bit mm, sort of yeah, like a bit. I like the rugged. I liked the ruggedness of, of Snowdonia, and yeah. I felt that the Lake District was a bit sort of more rolling hills, if you like. Yeah. Um, but then, but then Darren suggested we have you on, and I watched some of your videos, and I'm like, oh my god, I've got to go there. I've got to go there. Oh my god, that looks amazing. So more than more than James. Oh, James, who isn't here, by the way. Um, no, he's off. He's <laughs> off to the lakes tomorrow, so he's having an early night. But. Um, more than James's stuff, like you, you have made me really want to go to the Lake District. So oh, that's, good. Um, good. Yeah. I must admit, quite a few people have said that. You know, I thought I didn't realise the lakes are so rugged and you know mm. barren and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was rolling hills, green grass, you know, cute lambs, Beatrix Potter, all that kind of stuff. And it's yep. yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, I think when you're unfit like me, you spend most of the time <laughs> down by the lake, down by the lakeside. Not wrong see, with that. So, by the so pub. that's what that's yeah. what you see. Yeah, down, down the pub and in the chippy. <laughs> I, I, must, I must admit, I echo what Gary's saying. I, I just said in the preamble that you know, I hadn't subscribed to your channel, Glenn, until today, or come clean. But you know, I've looked at a few vlogs today, and I'm going to go back and look at a few more. But I think it's just the way you, you take us on that journey, really, because it's primarily hiking that you do with, with photography as well. Obviously, as Gary says, there's some stunning work in there as well, but it's primarily hiking around some of the fells. It but is, it's, yeah. it's, it's just the way you, you take people along. You know, It's just a very likeable character that you've got there you've got your dog with it i don't know there's just something about you that's just not stereotypical yeah. i'm a hiker and look at these fantastic views you really get into it and it's yeah. great to watch mate so yeah i'm oh, gonna watch a few much. more yeah. i mean it all just started really i mean the, the 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 whole point of starting it was just to do just to record the walks you know for one day when i won't be able to do it anymore just to have those memories and and what have you and yeah, I, mean, I didn't think anybody would watch it. In fact, it started on Instagram. I thought, oh, I'll just go and do this walk and record it and, you know, go back one day and have a look at it. And all these people said, oh, you need to do that on YouTube. It's brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a go. And, uh, yeah, that's it. See, there you go. That's that's why it's so likeable. Do you yeah, see what I mean? It's like you, you're so self-effacing. There's no like, yeah, I'm great. You're just like, yeah, I'll give it a go. It'll be all right. And that's what, and that's what most of your videos are like. You look, I mean, you look at stuff that I sort of go, yeah, I, I, you, I wouldn't even do the first bit of that. And you're like, be, let's give this a go. Oh, it's a bit tight here. And I'm like looking down like, Jesus, there's like a 400 foot drop down there. Oh, I'm, oh. honestly, I'm terrible. I'm so clumsy. There's certain places I, I, I need to go to and I'm like, oh, how am I going to record that? Because I, I will fall off it. You know, it's, it, yeah, really clumsy. Well, I think what we should do now, I think we should perhaps... Um, not that we're going to see it, but we should show a clip possibly uh, on of Glenn's channel. Uh, pick a, a, a couple of minute clip of uh, Glenn doing Everest Base Camp. Okay. Just got to the village of Dingbosh here. Just here. And uh, I think I'm just going to bomb it up to the top of here and have a look at what's on the other side. It's quite interesting. The views are really opening up now. And how the tap lamp just looks awesome. Let's go and check out what's up here. Just look at it. It's mind blowing. <laughs> so we're here two nights. <sighs> Boy, two nights. And then uh, tomorrow, 
is an acclimatization day, which I've, I've already mentioned, uh, where we can probably climb up on some of these ridges, maybe up towards our Dablam, look up the other side there, just to get up higher than where we are to help with that whole acclimatization, get the red blood, red blood cells uh, created and then uh, that'll help us for the next day when we head up to La Boucher, oh, however you pronounce it. So what I'll do is I'll get to the top of this hill and um, probably knock out a few photographs and uh, share one of you, if they're any good. I did watch a little bit of that today as well. I've, I've watched several in clips. I've not gone. So your view time is not going to be too good because I've, I've stopped halfway <laughs> through a few. Sorry yeah. about that. But the base camp ones, yeah, that was a trek and a half, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell us about that, Glenn. Where, where was that for you? Uh, have you got long enough? I mean, that is poor. Just a, a brilliant, uh, just a fantastic experience. Yeah. I can't even put it into words, to be honest with you. What do you want to know? <laughs> Which bit? Well, how how hard was it? Because I watched one of your videos. I, I don't know what the timing was. It was obviously before you went to um, the, the the base camp, and I think yeah. you was carrying a lot of weight yeah. in your rucksack. And you said, "I'm actually I'm in training. I'm carrying more weight than I need to because I'm in training for for Everest." Yeah. So all the training that you put in prior to it, how difficult was that hike? Oh, it was incredibly difficult. And it was from right from the beginning when you land at Luckler in that little plane, you can feel it straight away like, oh, this is, every breath is is an effort, you know. And it, it just never gets better because you're going up every day that little bit yeah. further up. It just never seems to get any easier. But the further up you go, the more the headaches become debilitating. You know, it's uh, just, you, you, can, you can walk 50 metres and you're out of breath. It's... It's unbelievable. I mean, little hills, like for, for example, one of the places we went to was called uh, Dingboshe, beautiful village, one of my favorite spots of the whole, the whole trek. And um, I just want to run onto a little bit of a ridge, watch the sunset, that kind of stuff. And it nearly killed me. I mean, it was, it was a tiny, tiny hill that I'd get up in about 10 minutes normally. It took me about an hour to get to the top. Just, really? Yeah, really difficult. Was yeah. that the one with the flags? Where you had all the flags at the top of the hill? Was that uh, that one? Because yeah, I think it. Yeah, it'll be that cause, one. Yeah. Because I watched you. I watched that one, and I thought he looks absolutely exhausted. Yeah. Like, and you oh, said yeah. I've just come up here, and it and, and it's tricky. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I bet you're understating that because you looked completely done. Yeah, yeah, and and that ba the the day of base camp. Oh, that was. Yeah, I just wanted to curl up in a ball and die. To be honest with you, it was really? so awful. <laughs> So how yeah. fast do you recover when you start to come down? Oh, it's Can really you... quick, really quick. So what you do is we, we basically, on the way down, we covered uh, the equivalent of, I think it was two or three days. So what would take three days to go up, we did yep. it in a single day. And you can feel it almost straight away. It's incredible. And by the time we got down to Luckler, I mean, we were skipping around and, and, and all really? sorts. Yet yeah. on the way up, we were nearly dying at Luckler, uh, not Luckler, yeah. at um, Namshire Bazaar. It's incredible, yeah. So you'd yeah. highly recommend it? Oh, if, if you can do it. Because I wasn't, well, I've, I've always been a bit obsessed with Everest. In the last couple of years, I've been watching all the, the you know, YouTube videos on Everest and people dying and all that kind of stuff. Just fascinating, you know, the documentaries. Yeah. Um, and then I never thought I'd ever go there. And then this opportunity came up and I thought, right, I'll go. I'll see what it's like. It'll be all right. But then, yeah, it just blew my mind completely. And I think about it almost on a daily basis. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it'd have that kind of effect at all. But wow. I mean, it just like so. When are you going to make a push for the summit? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would love to do that, but I don't, one, I don't have the money, and two, those queues. Yeah. Yeah. Just pe too many people dying up there. It's, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But maybe one of the other ones around there. Maybe not Everest. Maybe 
K2? Yeah, I got for K2. <laughs> yeah, that'd be easy, that one, wouldn't it? No worries. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you I got a little bit obsessed with that as well. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I must admit, I, I do like the idea of that, but I'm not a mountaineer, really, so, yeah, that would that would need a lot of training and yeah, yeah a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that a charity that you did when you did base camp? So it was it, cancer charity, wasn't it? Yeah, it was prevent breast cancer. Yeah, yeah so it was. Yeah. Um, I mean, we raised a lot of money. I think it's about one hundred and twenty thousand now. We raised wow. for that trip. Wow, yeah. brilliant! So it was really well good. Done. Yeah, about, well about done, 30. mate. Well yeah. done, but indeed. I was just one of thirty-two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I raised a little bit. And, yeah, even good. so, was brilliant though. Was was really brilliant to watch. I have to say. Oh, thank you. As as yeah. are as are your your Lake District ones as well. They're, I mean, like I say, we were just saying before we started, you're quite binge worthy. It's <laughs> like I've, I find that like because Darren sort of introduced me to you and sort of said, "Oh, we must get Glenn." When he's, you know, so I like sort of watched a few and it, like you watch one and you like. Oh, I'll just, I'll just watch another one and then you sort of watch another one and you find before you know it you've watched about five and it's just yeah. like it, it's it's just yeah, crazy suck up a punishment that's for yeah. Sure. Yeah. so why why that's my question what what is it about hiking the lake district what what made you decide oh. to do that well like i say it was just i mean i love i love hiking i mean it, it got into me probably at an early age through school and scouts and that kind of stuff. So I just loved the Lake District. Um, and then, I don't know, I just got, I, uh, after that I got into photography and then I guess the two just sort of married together and it was like, well, I like being up in the remote places. I like taking photographs. You know, Because we are talking about your hiking, but your mm. photography is superb. Oh, thank you very Mate, much. And I mean absolutely yeah. superb because you don't put yourself across as a a photography channel. It's more of a hiking channel. But yeah. the images yeah. that you show, I mean, I think, Gary, you commented as well, didn't you, about Glenn's uh, photography? Unbelievable. Fantastic. I, I mean, I, you, you, you rarely mention it, to be honest. Yeah. You sort of say... I'll get the camera out here. I might get the camera out there, but that's all you say. You don't really, oh, yeah. and then and then you <laughs> see the photo. You're like, wow, your website. Yeah. It's like I'm. A, I know it sound, we sound a bit like sort of fanboys, don't we? Like, Ooh, yeah, we. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like it's like you see the stuff. You see the photos. You're like, oh my god, they are so good. You don't even. You, it's because you shoot Sony. That's why. That's, <laughs> what, it that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're handheld, though, aren't you? you so again. Hand, you're handheld. You don't take a tripod. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I used to do a lot of tripod stuff, um, but I just found it got in the way. <laughs> you know, particularly for walking, it's just too heavy and cumbersome mm. and what have you. I just like the idea of just whipping the camera out, get a couple of shots, and just move on. You know. Yeah. It makes it sound so easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just whip it out and move on. Now, there's the tagline for the podcast right there. <laughs> the, the trouble for me is that I sort of can't get out the habit of taking a tripod when I'm yeah. in the mountains, but very often I don't use it. Yeah. But I still take it, so I'm might not getting it. the benefit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It, that's the thing, is it? It's, it? It takes so much gear with it to think, well... I probably won't need that lens, but oh, if I come across that, I probably will. Use, right, I'll take that one anyway, and I probably won't use that, you know, that camera. But I'll take it anyway because I might need it. <laughs> Before yeah. you know it, you've got like 50 kilos on your back. Yeah. And none of it's used. <laughs> that is the danger. <laughs> yeah. So I've always we're... got this thing about uh, the worst case scenario is having to spend a night on the hill waiting for rescue because you twisted your ankle or something and I've just yeah. got this fetish for in the event I ever have to do that and I never have but in the event that I ever do I want to be virtually as comfortable as I would be in a tent so I've got a bivy I've got you know I've got oh, everything yeah. wow. I never I never go on the mountain without the ability to spend a comfortable night yeah God, notwithstanding a, a throbbing ankle or something <laughs> but uh, yeah so so and I couldn't possibly go without it I've just yeah. always carried it so you must have some really lightweight gear to, to do yeah. that. Yeah, that's gear. the trade-off is, is the yeah. sort of, you know, entry-level child's camera uh, <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. A little disposable. Yeah, there'll come a point one day I'll be in my bivy bag thinking, thank God I've got a crap 
crap equipment. I'm so comfy. <laughs> Basically, you've just got the oh, shell God. of a you've got the shell of a camera, haven't you? You've got the shell of a camera, and then you've got one of those little like Polaroids, and you yeah, try and make, you try and make out that you've got a proper camera, but you don't really. It's just a just a pretend one <laughs> yeah. that you just yeah. I do apologise for my dog just ruining that all that. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Come here. Just wants to get involved, that's all. There you go, there she is. There's the pup. <laughs> Who's that? What's going on? I'll just leave her here, I'll go off. That is, that's the, that is the star of the show. She is the star of the show, yeah. yeah. So many people want to see her, they don't care about me. Yeah, she is what's, lovely. What's it like being out with Glenn then? Rough. <laughs> <laughs> That was terrible. That was brutal. That was. Listen, yeah. it can't get any Shocking. worse, can it? it We've waited 51 episodes just to use that. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? It is the first dog we've had on the podcast, though. Is it? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. It is, I know. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. We've had Winnie barking in the background. Yes. Yeah. Previously. Oh, I thought that was Winnie barking. To be, to be fair, when I heard when I heard the dog barking. No, she's been seen to this week. She's feeling very sorry for herself. I at the saw moment. that. Yeah. Seen oh, to. Bless her. Go on, you can clear off now. <laughs> I must admit, I would love to be able to take her up the hills with me, but I I don't see it being that feasible. No. Just imagine your YouTube subscribers that go through the roof. Yeah. Got the dog. It's prerequis prerequisite. Yeah. yeah. These days. <laughs> anyway, anyway, shall we um tumbleweed? Shall we? Shall we move on? Shall we talk? About, shall we? <laughs> There's a bit of a cricket moment. Yeah. Shall we talk about some uh, talk about some topics? Shall we? Well, we've got a few to get through. So the first one I think we will talk about this week is um now this one's one for everyone. It's kind of like this is from James and he's not even here. So um it says being honest, do we take pictures for ourselves or for popularity amongst others? Now, I don't think anybody here, I don't think anybody here takes pictures for other people. But, but you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I can see why people would want to do that. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I, don't think, I don't think we do, but it's always nice, I suppose, when people enjoy your photos. So do we take photos mm. for other people? Without kind of really consciously realise, I don't know. It is a tricky one, that it isn't is tricky, it? Yeah, it is a tricky one. And we had obviously Stuart McGlennon, um, you know, uh, I don't know, a, a month ago, five weeks ago, and you know, Stuart, obviously being a professional photographer, he has to take photos that he knows will sell. Yeah. So perhaps even Stuart doesn't take the photos that he wants to to take. Um, he has to take photos that he know that's that's pleasing and is going to sell in in the gallery. But I suppose that's slightly different to the question, really. But yeah, I don't know, mate. If I'm honest, if I got to be totally honest, I think I think I take them for myself. Yeah. But deep down, am I thinking, oh, I wonder if everyone will like this photo? Then this I, is, what do you this is the think? thing. I think that for me, I think maybe. That I, I always say to myself, I'm taking these photos because I want to, because this is what I see and this is how I want to interpret it. But I often look and I think subliminally, you're thinking, I can't put that one out. I can't put that one up. That was the word I was looking for, but I was a bit worried about saying subliminally because I knew I was, <laughs> I knew I was going to struggle with that word. But yeah, carry on, girl. No, I, I do. Sub, subliminally. 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 <laughs> I just think that you, I think you're influenced by what works and why what works with others and what doesn't. So if you go out and you see a shot that's really popular, say for instance, if say for instance if you're the bluebells are out at the moment, aren't they? So say for instance you go out and you see a shot. There's a lot of shots at the moment where it's bluebells, trees, sunlight coming through, maybe a little bit of ICM involved, and you think you go out and you think right, hmm, I'm, I'm here. What am I going to take here? You wouldn't probably take, I don't know, a top-down shot of a bluebell because you liked it. You'd probably look and go, right, thinking about what's popular, even if you're not consciously thinking about what's popular, you're going to take that shot probably that, that everyone else seems to like because it's popular. Mm. Uh, mm. So, so, I, so I've basically completely contradicted what I just said when I said none of us do. <laughs> well, but it's hard though, isn't it? I mean, we're all we're all influenced by people or, or things that we see even if we don't want to 
necessarily copy them, you know, down to the T. But, you know, you might see it's difficult because, you know, we might see a really nice shot that we appreciate. And then three weeks later, we're in, not in that exact position, but we, we might be in an area that, 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 that's very similar. And we just, you know, you just kind of think, oh, yeah. I really like that, the, that style or I like that. And without, you know, trying to copy something, perhaps you do try and emulate it a little bit, you know. I think we, it can seep in like osmosis. It can, you know, you, if you're on Instagram, you're seeing a certain style a lot. It can. I've even found myself going down that route a little bit, you know, a certain type of processing style and that kind of mm. thing. And they go, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just step back a bit here because that's, it, yeah, I've seen I that. I think it's easily done. Mm, it is very easy. Yeah. Particularly with, like I say, Instagram, social media. Yeah. You're just going in all the time. You're absorbing yeah. it. Yeah. But going back to the question, surely we're not taking pictures just to please somebody else. Surely we're at the root, we're taking pictures for ourselves. We're taking a picture because we love it. It's a capture in the moment that we were there and we enjoy it. Surely the, the spin-off is if somebody else likes it and you get a little bit of a pat on the back, oh, that's a great image, it just makes you feel better and it makes you feel as though you're happy that they like your image. But surely deep down we're all taking them for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Unless your point valid about Stuart taking a picture to sell, that's a different story. He is taking mm. a picture for somebody else. But amateur photographers, surely just mm. taking them for themselves. Well, well, you, well, you are taking them for yourself, but do you not think that maybe when you get to somewhere and you line up a shot, you've got that in your head, that what makes a good shot? So even though you, you're taking it because you enjoy the process of taking it and you want to, you know, you want to record the moment and you want to, you know, sort of, you know, there's sort of pride in what you've done. But do you think that maybe you actually sit there and as you're lining it up, you're kind of subconsciously thinking about what makes that shot work compositionally. And maybe these influences are, are sort of seeping in to, to your to your thought process. Do you know what I mean? It's like musicians. They'll always say, I was influenced by so-and-so or influenced by so-and-so. And you can hear that in their music, even though their music is different from... A, a down, you know, straight out copy of the, of their influences. There's part of that in them. It's just there. Yeah, but being influenced by somebody else or being inspired by somebody else, you're still taking the picture for yourself. You just you've been helped along the way because somebody's given you an idea. Somebody's given you something that you think actually I really like that image. I'm going to go out now and try and take a picture myself. That's my image. That's maybe influenced on somebody else. But it's still your okay. image. Okay. So look at this from yourself. a slightly different angle. Then if you because obviously we've all got YouTube channels and social media, whether it be kind of Twitter or Instagram or whatever it is. So let's say for our sake, you was to shoot a, a photo before you share it in your vlog or Instagram or wherever it may be. Do you ever think, I wonder how this photo will be received? Yeah. I think every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. going to say that every photo but I take. It wouldn't stop me sharing it if I still no. liked it. That's right. Yeah. And and you're often surprised because the, it's often the shots that you necessarily love that are not necessarily loved by other people, and the ones that you're not as keen on are. Yeah. It's just that the way was it works. Stuart McGlennon's exact point. Stuart McGlennon said he loves shooting in black and white. Mm. It mm. doesn't sell in the gallery, so he shoots. Obviously, yeah. full color, like not lovely, colorful scenes. Mm. It's interesting now about black and white because I found that on Instagram as well, it, they don't do as well. Yeah. Instagram likes color and, and people's faces and backsides yeah. and that kind of stuff. Black and white photographs don't do well. I Although love black and white. I love it, yeah, absolutely. Really do. Yeah. I, so it's, I've, it's a, I've got a, a slightly different experience because when I started with photography, there was no such thing as social media. And I wasn't a member of a camera club or anything, so I can genuinely say that all the images I took in the sort of first five years of the 80s were entirely to please myself because mm. um, I was just a hobbyist. And what I found was when I came back to photography yeah, about 2007, something like that, when I, 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 I got a digital camera a couple of years prior to that, but I really got into art for art's sake about 07. Um, and I would say that uh, th those first few years, again, I wasn't posting on any social media at all. It was just, you know, on my screen and me enjoying it and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and when I started on social media, 
And it's, I think the first ones, I wasn't on Instagram, I wasn't, it was just on my Facebook page. Overtly, I was hoping that people would enjoy them and that I would get positive feedback. I can remember myself putting them up and thinking, oh, and there was a, there was a specific point at which I thought, I think this is good enough to share. I'm going to share it and then fingers crossed. And that's what I did. Um, and I, my attitude gradually morphed over a period of probably two or three years. So at the outset, it was, oh, I hope, I hope they like this. I've taken it so that people will like it. When I got to a point of self-confidence that, yeah, uh, you know, I've got some validation, if you like, plus I'd impressed a few camera club judges and won the odd award. Um, at that point, I thought, I don't care anymore. I, I've, I've validated myself. Mm. I know I'm half decent. So from now on, I couldn't care less. And, uh, and, and I've gone out public to say that I'll process the hell out of something if I choose to, because I don't care what you think. Yeah. And, and that confidence has evolved from a, a position of not being confident. But now that I sort of feel that I can hold my own, mm. I don't care what anybody thinks. And if I, if I put a picture up and nobody likes it, pff, yeah. so what? You know, mm. I, I still pay the mortgage and have dinner. Life goes on. Yeah. Mm. Do you think, though, that you, you, you do that now because you're from a position of confidence? Do you think yes. that if you, if you hadn't won those competitions and you weren't, getting those likes and that those accolades if you like do you think you'd still be going out today and trying to get photos that other people yeah would like? there would there would certainly be an element of that absolutely there would although it's fair to say that sort of you know getting on for 15 years on i probably would have given up but um i think from the standpoint you know m most of of my contemporaries my peers people like you good guys and the sort of guests we've had on we're all of a certain uh, high, sort of, you know, mid to top end enthusiast standard. Mm. We, we, you know, we know we're pretty good, but we also know we're by no means the best. Mm. So with that in mind, we're in that lucky position and we may well do it subliminally or perhaps, you know, subconsciously even, it's easier to say. <laughs> but yeah, we, that, that might be in the back of our minds. I don't know. I, I don't think it's in mind because I really... I'm at the point now where I do what I please. But um, it just sort of goes hand in glove that we can produce images that, we, you know, we're happy with it, we share it, and some get hundreds and hundreds of likes, some get hardly any, and it's like, well, so what? doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think, you know, we perhaps over the course of this series of pubcasts, we've done quite a lot of navel-gazing, I'm not sure it's it's super helpful sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you should just stand in front of a waterfall and go, what a fabulous waterfall. I'm going to make an image of that. Mm. And, you know, a kind of perhaps the extent to which we question ourselves isn't super healthy. That's my opinion. I've yeah, been questioning come myself on. my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> How's your health? And look at the state of me. <laughs> <laughs> My my comment would be just because they're, you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not talking about you. So, um, <laughs> yeah. but I do yeah I get I, I do get your point. Actually, we can we can um, we can talk about something else quickly now because this kind of really nicely leads in as you were saying about your photography and you you're happy with it and we're at a place where we're all you know whatever. But um, are we happy? Are we happy with our photography progress? Because this was another question. You know, and, and I think this is quite a good one. Do you feel like, do you guys feel like you're progressing sort of yeah. year on year yeah. or month on month with your photography? Yeah, I do. I still think I'm, I'm very much at the early stages of my photography journey. And I think it was Nick Page. Um, I think it was about a year ago, 18 months ago, I watched a, a, a video of his and I think he was a little bit frustrated with himself that he thought he'd plateaued with his processing. Um, and I think that comes with, because Nick has got such a very high standard and he's probably had a high standard for a long, long time. But I'm, as I say, I'm very much still very early doors on my photography journey and I look at the 
my original photos from four years ago to where that where I am now, and I do think that I've I've hugely improved. And in in fact, a video that's coming out. Well, I'm editing it at the moment, and it will be out uh, next week. My editing style in them photos are very different to anything I've ever done before. So I do think that f for me, I'm now starting to explore different avenues. I've not got to the stage where I just think I've almost like run out of ideas or I've plateaued. I think I, I'm certainly, I'm, my, my photography is certainly improving year on year so far. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't doesn't mean to say I'm any good. I'm just saying that I'm improving <laughs> year on year. Low Let base, me to low add. base. <laughs> exactly. No, I totally agree. I think now is now is the the best I've ever been, and but back then was the best I'd ever been. You know, so exactly. you're always yeah. You know, you're always looking back and going, oh my god, what was I thinking? Yeah. Mm. But now is wow! I'm, I'm absolutely shit hot now, and I know in a few years' time I look back going, "What the hell?" Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you find that though? <laughs> because I have to say, I found this myself, and I'm I'm terrible for it. What I can't remember when I started taking photos, maybe like properly, maybe five or six years ago. I joined a camera club, and I posted, I put these photos into the competition, and one of them was commended. And the other two didn't do anything. And I looked and I thought, how could you not commend those photos? What is what is wrong with you people? <laughs> and when I look back now, they are the worst photos. Like one of them was a picture of a statue on a bridge. <laughs> like, and the guy went, well, that's just a record shot. And I sort of, a what? How very dare you? Look at what I've done with the sky there. And like, how can you call that? And then you look back at it now and you think, Actually, yeah, it was rubbish. Do you do you look at your all of your photos as you go along? And oh, these are the best I've ever taken. This is the best I've ever done. Yeah, like each oh, new. Yeah. yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So many photographs. That, even in my head, I think, oh yeah, it's a really good one. And I go on looking at it, and it's like, oh, I've got to take that off the website. That's awful. It's <laughs> got to go. Yeah. What was I thinking? Yeah. It is strange. It is strange it is, how yeah. how your subjectiveness of of or your feelings about it are clouded. Yeah. at that point in time mm. and then when you go back and look at it with an objective mind you go mm, yeah. actually I and wasn't it, so good I guess your taste change as well don't they just you yeah. know things that you like and what you don't like yeah it's mm. you've got a lot of fantastic mood moody shots I like find mood. on your website yeah. I think they're Dark. just so, yeah it's that yeah. you've got a lot where it's, there's a real contrast I think mm. I think it's the one that's like literally your main image on your page I just love that one. It's just so dark, and then there's there's light, and it's it's yeah. just absolutely gorgeous. You do do a lot of really moody shots. I just like the the, the dark and the light, like you say, that kind of the the whole uh, chiaroscuro style stuff. You know, the um, I, I just don't like clutter. <laughs> I don't like yeah. messy bits in the foreground. And I'm so I glad you like... use that expression. I, I used that in a presentation <laughs> once, the chiaroscuro, and, All and right, yeah. everybody just looked blankly at me. Yeah. And I thought, you're a camera club. You should know about stuff like this. But they had no clue. No, oh, no. Yeah. If you don't know who that no. guy is, he's a guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know who that guy is, what's the matter with you? Seriously. I thought he was a boxer. I thought, I thought is he fighting a welterweight? I can't, I can't, I can't picture him. <laughs> I thought it was a beer. <laughs> oh, brilliant! <laughs> but no, I, 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 my, my style has been um, compared to that sort of thing as well. Oh, yeah. But I think the thing is, you know, with both of us, when, when you're shooting in the mountains, very often the weather's shit, so it's kind yeah. of all you can do anyway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I find that with my photography recently, I do feel I've plateaued. I do oh. feel I'm not getting any better. I feel like the best the the most recent best shot I took was back in December. And I think the reason is, is because I'm focusing too hard on my video at the moment. Mm. Like I went mm. out yesterday and I was so focused on, on well, actually I'm pissed off yesterday, but that's another story um, with all the litter. But I was focusing on trying to get sort of good shots of 
because yeah, I've, I've got a drone now and I'm like trying to get a nice drone shot of this and some a reveal of this and this that and the other and I find that when I get to the place even even not even the footage just about going when I get to the place and I'm taking the images they're almost like an afterthought it's like I'm oh, there nice. to take the images yeah. but the images are just I feel like I've gone into autopilot and I'm like just talking to the camera and oh this shot here and then when I come home, I feel I didn't really think about that. I didn't like I took a shot of a waterfall yesterday, and I looked at it and thought there's way too much mid nothing going on in the mid ground. I should have gone low. I should have cut that mid ground out because there's some lovely rocks in the foreground or pebbles in the foreground in the water, and I just didn't. I was just so focused on getting through it, you know, getting through the the, the shot and getting the video done and getting back and yeah, I, I kind of I did, and, and I've done that about probably. The last, I can't remember the lot. I think the last time, like I said, was December when I actually was thinking about the shots because it was misty and I was excited about it and I was really, you know, I really want to get a good shot here. But ev everything since then has just literally been, I'll, I need to go out to get a vlog. So, so I'll go is here that, and I'll. Okay, finish. but is that gal, how do I word this? Because you don't. You, you you don't kind of go into the mountains. And I know every landscape photographer doesn't have to go into the mountains as such, but is it because you tend to migrate to the same sort of areas that perhaps you're, you're, you feel that your photography has plateaued? Whereas, do, do you ever come out of your comfort zone? Yeah. I, well, I think, it's, I think the reason it's plateaued is because I haven't been excited about anywhere I've been for mm. months. Yeah. It's like I've been... I, I get that. I've mm. gone to the Peak District because my daughter's at university in the Midlands. And so I can go there, I can do a vlog in the morning, I can see her in the afternoon, and then I can come home. But everywhere, like yesterday, the place I went to, lovely place, don't get me wrong, really lovely. But when I got there, I got up at 3 o'clock, in the 3.30 in the morning. When I was driving there, I was almost like, oh, I don't know what to expect. I've never... I didn't really... I've researched it, but there wasn't much going. There were not that many videos or, or images from the place. It could be good. It could be bad. I'm not sure. I wasn't like, oh my god, I can't wait. You know, when I, when you go to Snowdonia or you know somewhere you're excited about, you're like, I can't wait to get here. I'm gonna, oh, I can That's see what all I mean. the shots I'm gonna get. Yeah. But I was sort of going there, and I was like, well, it might be all right. As it happened, it was a lovely place, but I'm not. I'm not excited about the shot. I'm not. No. Like, I'm almost like churning it out to get the video out yeah. and that's mm. even though i'm enjoying it and i enjoy i think now i enjoy the process of filming the video more than i enjoy taking the shots see yeah. I, I must admit i'm the other way around yeah i i i, I even processing my images I, I mean perhaps i shouldn't be saying this but i even find that a bit of a ball ache if yeah. i'm honest with you just processing the photos i'd rather be out i i i love being out and i love taking the photos but once i've once i've come home and i i think right you know i suppose i better look through the photos and i better start processing them I, if we if we had a scale of one to ten ten being out there and taking the photos yeah. the process and putting the video is like a five and then a three yeah. it really is i've got thirty thousand photographs sat there ready to be processed because <laughs> yeah. of that exact reason i don't want to do it i want to be out yeah just getting more <laughs> yeah. 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 Tricky one. It's strange. That, uh, why? Well, why do it then? I'm sorry, <laughs> but none of this is compulsory. That's a very good point, yeah. Yeah. Cuz I I enjoy the vid I enjoy the videos once they're done. I I, I really do. I I like putting a video together. I I like the the end product of putting a video together. And and I like, you know, the channel and I like the interaction. But, it, but sitting there at a computer putting it together, I just, uh, yeah, I just, I, I find a bit of a ball ache if I'm honest with you. So, so you, what you're saying is that the reward is worth the pain on the path to the reward? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, the I minute to, it isn't, you need to stop. Yeah, no, I have, <laughs> to, I have to go through that kind of, put, as a, I know I've said this on the podcast before, but obviously I don't work. Uh, I don't work in an office. I don't work at my computer. So I go out every day to work. So yeah. I get very limited time. So when I come home of a night, and that's when I'm thinking, oh, 
You don't want to if, take yourself off to that. Yeah, that yeah. But if I have, a, if I had a day off, for argument's sake, putting the video together would be an absolute, uh, an absolute pleasure. It wouldn't be a problem. But when you've had a long day at work, coming home, thinking, right, I've got to put this video together. You know, as I say, I, I like the end of it. I like it when it's released. I just don't yeah. like building it. I think you need an assistant or a team. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It is. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. Are you off, Glenn? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think. <laughs> by the sounds of it, I don't think Glenn's got enough time either. No, no. no. It, it, I'm exactly the same problem. I just can't stand that whole. <clears throat> you know, you finish your work, like you say, finish work. The last thing you want to be doing is just sat on the computer. You want to be out doing something or anything. Yeah. I mean, I work in IT, so I'm on the computer all day anyway. I don't want to be sat. You know, switch yeah. that one off, put this one on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. It is. See, I go to bed the night before I go out. I used to, I used to go to bed. It's, this is a bit of like a confessional, isn't it? It's like a, it's like therapy. <laughs> yeah. I used to go to bed at night. No one's watching. Be, before a night out, and think, oh, you know, or before a day, I think, oh, I can't wait to get here. This, like, think about the shots I'm going to take. Now, literally, I go to bed. I close my eyes and think, right, I need to go to sleep. And all I can think of is, right, I need to get a pan shot of this. Yeah. I need to get a rise of this. I need to get a reveal of this. It's all video. None of it's yeah. photography. None yeah. of it's photography now. Exactly the same. Yeah. 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 I don't go out now and think, I need to get this shot. I, I can't wait to shoot this waterfall. I think I can't wait to be, I don't know, editing this to make it look good, the video. Mm. So it's like I almost now think, mm, maybe I should stop stop photography and just concentrate on making well, the why don't me and, Gal, why don't me and you team up? If I go out and hike and take the photos <laughs> and just give it all to you... <laughs> You do all the editing, and we'll just share the channel. No, I like that. I would like be perfect. Take, I like filming the stuff. I love. I do. I do. I Film do me love, then. I do like. The, yeah, but then I've got to come on the flipping hike with you. Exactly. <laughs> As Glenn says, you can be my assistant. Yeah. Be his bitch. If I could get the drone, if I could get the drone to follow you all the way up the hill while I'm still at the bottom with a beer, that would work yeah. perfectly for perfect. me. That would work. Yeah. yeah. That would work. Happy Most days. of my, I find myself on, on vlogs now um, when I know there's a key point where right, that, that's going to be a really good spot to get some photographs. But that spot further up, but for, you know, further on the walk is going to be great for drone footage. Mm. I end up just skipping past the bit with the photographs and just getting that drone footage before the weather comes in, people turn up, whatever, you know. Yeah. I yeah. end up just sacrificing the bit that really I want to do more than any of it. But the yeah. video's just so... Mm. Yeah. But what I do, what I do like in the comment section, and I had one this week, when people put, like, really enjoyed the video, blah 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 blah. I know how much hard work goes into making one of these because yes. I think a lot of people appreciate it, yeah. but perhaps a lot of people don't realise the effort that goes in. You know, from you know, from from, from doing the hike, taking the photos, processing the photos. <laughs> Putting the vlog together, it's so time consuming. It really Incredibly is. Incredibly yeah. time consuming. Yeah. And I Mine think... aren't. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been said many, many times on the podcast comments that we're grumpy old gits. We really sound like <laughs> grumpy old gits now. I tell you, moaning about video and moaning but it, about it's this. It's the and truth. Moaning about though, being outside. It? I hate yeah. outside. Yeah. God almighty. Yeah. All right, should we change the subject <laughs> then? Right, before, okay. we, before we get let's, struck off. Let, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about something else. Okay, so should we move on to something else then? And uh, something a little bit less moany. The only problem is um, most of our uh, topics are. So, how about? Um, now let's go out. Of a, let's go out of a real moan, a real like whinge up. Really yeah, for just oh, like oh, whinge the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. All right then. Let's try this one for size. What would you change about yourself? That's well, easy. I love hair. <laughs> right, done next. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, Gal. Yeah, I'll ask the question, Gal. What would you change about yourself? Oh God, you just uh, uh, how long? Well, have you got? I, I tell you what, if the four <laughs> of us now just, we just left, yeah. we just went, we go and have yeah. dinner, we go down a pub, Gal will still be talking for a good would, twenty minutes, half I an would. hour. Um, uh, I would say probably. 
I think I think I'm misunderstood. Do you know that? I do. I think I'm misunderstood. I think people think I'm negative, and um, I moan a lot. Yeah, and I moan a lot. Yeah, no, I do. I genuinely do. I, it's like on YouTube, I, and and I do. I'm not on YouTube. On Facebook, and I find myself doing this a lot. I find myself putting things that I think are funny. Well, I used to. I don't really put, I post anything anymore. But back in the day, I used to post things that I thought was like, you know, like I'm taking a sideways look at life type funny, yeah. And then when I look and see someone else who I think is trying to do the same thing, I sort of look at them and think, you're such a moany bastard. <laughs> like, all you do all day long is moan about this and moan about that. So I think I'm a bit misunderstood. I, I like to think I'm I'm kind of quite jovial and optimistic but i think probably the least thing i think i need to be less judgmental i'm gonna go there let's start oh. it. yeah if i could anything mm-hmm. I, I am very do you know what i'm i'm if i make my mind up about something then nothing's going to sway me from it and even if i'm wrong i'll still think it and i can't help myself mm-hmm. so if i think someone for instance if i think well, this guy's obviously well, obviously he's talking about me. If he says something, especially now you're on, you know, when you're on YouTube, and then you get other people on there, and and they say things, you know, he's talking about me. He's definitely talking about me. No doubt, he's talking about me. Even though he probably, he probably isn't. He probably doesn't even give a toss about me or worry about me at all. I still look and think he is talking about me, and I can't let it go. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. judgmental and not being able to let things go. I not need to deal sensitive. with. And being so sensitive. I need to deal with that as well. Do you ever make New Year's resolutions? Usually about weight, and they last for about <laughs> three days. <laughs> I was going to say because I can't imagine you ever sticking to a New Year's resolution. No, because you because you'll say I'm not going to be judgmental, and then the next week you you you'll fly <laughs> off the handle at some comment. What the hell is he talking about? I take offence at that. I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't say. I didn't say that. I, I, I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm just saying that I probably shouldn't be. I can't help myself. I think it's because I'm, I'm a, I'm, I don't get me wrong. I think that there are benefits to being a cynic. People, people underrate cynicism. They think that, oh, cynicism makes you miserable and it makes you this and it makes you that. But I think there are lots of benefits to it because you spot things before anyone else does. I've been right. See, I might be, I might be cynical and judgmental and whatever, but I've been right a lot. When all of the other people have gone, no, 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 that's not, that's not it. That isn't the truth of it. And I sit there and I go, yes, it is. That's exactly what's going on. And people look at me and go, no, it's not. And then down the line, they go, do you know what? You were right. Mm. You were right about him. Just and I'm like, yes, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's probably 400 people I was wrong about. <laughs> but I can claim it on the one that I was right about. So you're just play, playing the odds. Yeah, exactly. If, so if, you, if you slag enough people off, <laughs> yes. you will be right yeah, yeah. now and, and again. And that's the one you eat out on. That's the one that you, that's the one that you go, I told you. I told you. I was like, when? Yeah, I mean, I've got no friends and everyone hates me. But I was right about that one guy, wasn't I? <laughs> now I tell you what, I'm going to kind of uh, agree with you to 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 a point where I think you Which are bit? kind of a little. No, I think well, I think you are a little bit say say misunderstood. But hey, you know, hey, minute, uh, we, we, this is about everyone, right? This no, 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 it's about no. you. It's yeah. about you now. No, but you are. I mean, you know, we've all known each other now, especially this last year. We've got. You know, extremely kind of close, and yeah. you are extremely funny. You are a, a really nice Ooh, guy. Okay. You will do oh. anybody for you will do anything for anyone <laughs> if you like that person. Yeah. But then you do say so, say things sometimes, and I think, where did that come from? You know, it's literally <laughs> straight out the blue. <laughs> but then you, but but then I know the real you, so I know not to yeah. take offence when you say these things. But I can understand if someone doesn't know you. You can yeah. just think, oh, he's really moaning, or you know. But you're you're I, not like that. You, you're not. I, I'm not. It's just you're that not. every time I feel like, every time I feel like I want to say something to a broader audience, it's usually a moan. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know why. I, I just I can't. I guess I can't help myself. I I think I think that, I think that when you're, um, when you're, oh, 
smiling. Let's, let's not go down. Let's go down. Let's go down in the road. Let's talk. Smiling. Now, what I was say was, oh, oh when you're smiling. Oh, oh. It's smile with you. It's easy to become defensive and cynical when you spend a lot of time feeling like you have to defend yourself. So it's like that's my issue, but the, you know, I I have an upbringing where. I was quite, it was always my fault because I was a stepchild. So it was always like my stepmom would always say, you know, oh, you know, Gary's always like the, the the golden boy and gets away with everything with his grandparents and could do whatever he wants to. And every time, and then I didn't live with my grandparents anymore. And it was like, you know, I'll give you an example. My, my, when I first, <clears throat> I don't know why this is becoming a therapy session. <clears throat> when I first lived with my dad and my stepmom, they asked me to make them a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, because that was what was done. And I was about 10 or 11 or something. And I put tablespoons in for sugar instead of teaspoons because I'd never, ever been asked to do it before, ever. So making a cup of tea was like, coffee was alien to me. And they looked at me and I was like, oh, you know, spoiled kid, don't know how to do this, don't know how to do that. And that was kind of, you you, you then become cynical from those experiences because you you have to be defensive. You have to be strong and you have to be, mm. you know, so then I don't, you don't open yourself up to other people to allow them to, you know, shit on you, even if they're not going to. So then you become cynical and you become, this is very, can we talk about something else? Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I've got something I would like to be different. I oh, could brilliant. do with an extra six inches. Where about? <laughs> well, yeah, what direction? I thought your feet were quite big, Dave. Already. Uh, I I can't you know, no the thing is you see I I've always when I was a kid I wanted to be a policeman but back in those days you couldn't if you weren't a certain height yeah and then when they said oh yeah you can now it's like oh thanks a lot now that I'm just you know coming up to bus pass age <laughs> so and plus you know I I can't get men's backpacks to fit properly <laughs> so that's the only problem I've got. Sorry about that, Gary. I'll just take uh, the heat off you there. Thanks. Cheers. Appreciate that. <laughs> I wish I could, I wish I was less attractive as well. You know, mm. yeah. That must be a bit awful. That. Yeah. I get that. Terrible. Being mistaken for Brad Pitt at the bus yeah. stop. Yeah. <laughs> Being mistaken for the bus stop at Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to share? I'd like to be a stone lighter. Would you? Yeah, because I just I'm really struggling, but that that's another thing. I don't know. I I think if I had to change anything physically, it'd probably be my nose, because Leslie's always really? saying I've got a really big nose. So Never noticed your nose ever. No, it's because I'm always looking that way. And if I ever turn that way, you'll think, what a fucking hooter he's got. I'm just gonna stare at it all the time. Now. <clears throat> yeah. See, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but in terms of anything else, I think go back to personality that and, and your your. Uh, story there Gary about your upbringing I think I'm quite naive and I think I'm very trusting of people because of probably my upbringing I was you know I'm a fin boy I was brought up in the middle of nowhere you know and I moved to Peterborough as a big city and tried and started to experience shall we say life rather than life out in the sticks and therefore you get to you, you get to learn life skills and you get knowledge and you build confidence by your experiences and your upbringings and I've not traveled the world I've not been to different cultures and different I've just led my life in that sort of quiet enclosed environment of of the east and the fens and, and sort of remoteness <clears throat> and I'm an only child as well so I've not got brothers and sisters to sort of share life experiences with so I think my my observations of life sometimes I think I'm quite naive in some things I say and some things I do now, I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but I think that that's something that I always struggle with is to say, like, you know, when when a lot of people have conversations about things that they've experienced that I've never done, then, you know, am I am I missing out on things because I've never experienced it? And therefore, you know, am I, am I not sort of being confident enough to be able to have those types of conversations because I've never experienced it? So I'm quite naive in my thought and quite naive in what I'm you know, in, in the types of conversations I have sometimes. So I think if, if it was me, it's probably more to be more worldly wise, I guess, and a little bit more experienced in life to be able to be more confident and more um, trustworthy, I suppose, in people I talk to and I, I, decisions I, think, I make. I think you should stay as you are, mate. Because okay. the more worldly wise you become, the more cynical you become. 
Trust me. Mm. But I will say one thing: you are a bit naive because six fingers doesn't make you special. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was unique. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Anyone else want to share on this? This is this is deep, deep for the really? last one, isn't that it? That was deep. I think I, I'll share. Um, Go on. For me, self belief. I've got really low confidence in pretty much anything that I do. And it's, yeah, it's quite debilitating. And I think it stems from, you know, childhood teachers saying, yeah, you can't do that, you, you know. You want to do what? No, you can't do that. You just stick to this. Parents doing the same. And then just years of years of that kind of um, treatment, I guess. It, it just goes in and you just, you just never believe in anything you can do. Yeah, it's, mm. it's a... It's horrible, yeah. Yeah. Well, when uh, you came on, you were saying about being nervous, and we were. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I still am. I'm absolutely bricking it. <laughs> <laughs> we all think you're great, mate. Well, yeah. Well, well, kind of, yeah. But I think a lot of people suffer with that, don't they? Really, mm. this kind of like the imposter syndrome. We're, 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 you know, not just in photography. Yeah, yeah. I know, we're, but we anything in life, really. I think. But when you get to a certain age, I do think that that kind of disappears a little bit in in certain certain areas i know it has done for me anyway i think the imposter syndrome though is a good thing it it, it, people look upon the imposter syndrome and say you know for people who don't know the imposter syndrome is that you don't believe you're as good as you are because Mm. you 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 know but that's because you realize that you don't know everything so you're Mm. self-aware when you suffer from that, it's because you're self you're self aware. It's much better to think you're not as good as you are than to think you're better than you are. Mm. You know, yeah, because definitely. that's when it's dangerous. It's dangerous when like you you've got very little knowledge, yet you're trying to impart that and guessing in in mm. any for in any field, really. So it's much better to sort of hold back a bit and think, you know, I'm not quite as good as I think I am. Mm. No. That's not right, is it? I'm not. No, wait a minute. Am I not as good as I think I am? No, no, you're not as good as you think. There's a future for you in psychiatry. (laughs) (laughs) God damn imposter syndrome again. Um, Yeah. Anyway, it's. I think it's a good thing. It's much better to think you're not as good as you actually are than to Mm. think you're better than you are. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. But but on the flip side of that. And I and and I'm not one of these people, but you do get some people that are just such that like they're full of so much confidence mm. and self belief, and then, but they've got no real kind of qualifications. But it's their self belief and their confidence that yeah. pushes them to actually quite great heights. Yes, they can become successful because they, they believe it. Yeah, yeah, they can. Yeah, 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 and they make other people believe that they're good. Yes, exactly, and that's the problem, isn't it? Mm. That, that it, it's it, it's all well and good being confident and and you know thinking you're great, but you need to have the the knowledge to back that up. Mm. You know, yeah. I, I, I you know I did a I did a video about this the other day. There was one guy I'm not going to mention his name, and he was spouting out so much rubbish on YouTube about photography on and everything. He, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> Every, your your next week's topic. Everything he said. <laughs> Everything he said was a, was a, was a guess. It was a complete guess. And the, and the problem is, is there are people out there who who don't know that he's wrong. So when he's telling you to do this, which is completely wrong, I mean, like I said, you're not you know, it's not going to kill you, but it's not the point. You're trusting in someone, and they're giving you absolutely completely false information. That's that's really bad. That's just you know, it's 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 not good. And and there are a lot of people out there like that. I don't mind confidence if you know what you're mm. talking about, or if you know a little bit about what you're talking about. But when you know absolutely nothing, and you're trying to pass that off as as you know, you're trying to pass off guesswork as so facts. Who, who was this then? Name and shame. <laughs> I tell you, go and watch my video because I've named him. I've, I've named right. him in the comments on there, um, but I, I won't say who it is again because actually. Like I actually, I actually feel good about this because he stopped making videos. So oh. I don't know if he he hasn't put one. He was putting two or three out a week, and he stopped. He hasn't made a single one since I posted this video. So was it James Burns? <laughs> no, no, not James Burns. <laughs> but I'm hoping that he's gone off and he's deleted some of his videos where the, the lies were so bad. 
I'm hoping he's gone off and he's decided to, because I've got, you know, I've said before, I've got no issue at all. People want to go out, no matter how good or bad they are, because it's all about the journey and it's all about learning and it's all about this. But it's when you start trying to tell people you know what you're talking about. Hopefully he's gone off to learn about mm. or rethink what he's doing. And then if that's happened, then brilliant. I feel vindicated in saying something because mm. I'm actually, and I put an open thing out. He won't be watching this, but I put an open, an open invitation out. If there's anything he wants that I can help with, I'm more than happy to talk to the guy. More than happy to talk to him and help him out with with what little knowledge I have, you know. So either that or he's topped himself. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> gone dark again. <laughs> 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 Uh, One comment from Gary, I could do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's watching, by the way, or listening and gets offended, you're only joking. Yeah, it's if anyone's watching at this point, what the hell are you yeah. doing still here? Yeah. No, it's, just, it's just a bit of fun, though, you know. We are only having a bit of a laugh. We're, we're not being, we're not trying to change the world or, you know, make serious social commentary. We're just having a laugh. <laughs> Let's talk about something else before we before we go too far down that rabbit hole. How about um, this one's a good one: lakeside or mountains for photographs. Now we've got some really good mountain photographers here, so let's talk about that one. Who wants to start? How about you start, Dave? I mean, I know you prefer the mountains, but is there anything about being down by the lakeside or the Clint side that you? Um, um, yeah, absolutely, because most of the ones that I shoot have got a mountain right behind them, yeah. <laughs> so I get the best of both worlds. And, the, you know, it, I, I think it's horses for courses. The, the, the conditions dictate what's going to work best at any given time. You know, Darren was out with me when that magical morning by the lake Super. would have been terrible in the mountains. Yeah. So... You, you, I, I'm fortunate that I don't have to choose specifically, but if if I had to, if I live somewhere where it's I've got to travel and I've got a choice of go somewhere with a lake or go somewhere with mountains, the mountains win every time. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because lakes are more difficult, I think, to get a really interesting and engaging shot without... Uh, certain conditions or certain things to assist whereas I think you've got it's it's just easier in the mountains there are times when you can just point your camera at anything and you, you get a winning mm. shot and and so if you've got sun rays or if you've got dark clouds or even if you if you yeah, apart from complete clag if you've got some mist you can use that so I, I think you, you do the problem of course with mountains is is the accessibility because very often if you shoot them from down in a valley that 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 can be problematic so you, you unfortunately it does require you to do a certain amount of hiking to get into position to make the most of the conditions even if the conditions are more easy to work with so but for me mountains every time yeah do you think that's what makes the makes the mountain shots more unique well, obviously it does because there's less people up there taking them. Do you think? And do you think that, like, because we've also got a similar question, the hike or the photo? So we can kind of marry these two together. You know, Glenn, do you find that you like to take shots of mountains, for instance, more than lakes? Because A, it's difficult to get up there, so less people are doing it. And B, you've also had the enjoyment of the hike. Yeah, I think for me, just going to the lakes and mountains one. Every time I've been at a lake taking a photograph, I'm just looking up at the mountain going, I want to be there. I don't want to be here. I want to be walking right there. And I never think that the other way around. Never on a mountain looking down the lake thinking, oh, I wish I stood by that lake, you know. And for me, definitely it's the journey. It's that, it's the hike. It's funny because I've thought about this a lot, you know, is it, is it the hiking? Is it photography? But they, they both go together for me. It's, the the yeah it's come coming f- coming from a non hiker do you guys genuinely enjoy the hike yeah. or, or is it yeah, the yeah. end result of the hike you enjoy no no, no, no. Enjoy no. i'm willing to bet all three of us would hike whether or not there was photography i was Definitely. just going to say that yeah if if 
if someone held a gun to my head and said, right, you can hike, but you can't take a picture, or you can take a picture, but you can't go hiking, it would be hiking every time, you know, without a yeah. camera, just a, a bag of butties and that's it. Yeah, the only reason I took up photography is because I was already hiking and yeah. I wanted to be able to record the wonderful things that I saw and yeah. I thought, oh, well, I'll take up photography then. Yeah. But let's say I didn't take up photography, you know, as long as I don't lose my marbles, I can remember what I saw. Exactly. So I'm, so yeah, I'm yeah. still enjoying it. I can enjoy it again in my head. And, yeah. and also there's that whole thing about... Um, you know, you, you come down off the mountain, it, it's been a really tough hike and you sink a couple of pints or whatever it may oh, be, yeah. Yeah. but it ain't long before you're looking forward to the next one. Yeah. It's it is really addictive. Yeah. But, but another thing as well, <clears throat> with the, the lake stuff, I mean, it's, it, as an example, go to Bleetan, you know, the classic shot, you've got Bleetan, Langdale Pikes in the background, great. And you might spend a few hours there getting that shot, weather's changing. At the end of the day, you're going to walk away with probably one photograph, maybe two or three, you know. Whereas on a hike, the, the canvas is changing all the time. You're seeing different things. The weather's changing, the, you, the, the scenery's changing because you're moving around it. You're coming across, you know, streams, waterfalls, forests, mountains, clag, everything. So you end up with a bigger haul of photographs. You end up, you know, when you're not vlogging, because obviously the vlogging just takes over everything. But uh, when you're not vlogging, God, you can come, come away with just a... a the the other thing, dance. yeah, and the other thing is as you get up to elevation, you've got line of sight. So yeah. you've actually got more of the world, you know, that you can yeah. get into your lens than you can if you're down in a valley. Yes. Um, and, and so th there's that aspect to it as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing for me is I, I'm not... I, I, I'm, I, I'm guilty of it to some extent because when I make a video... Um, very often I'll be heading for a summit, uh, but um, to be honest, I, I, I'm quite happy to not even bother with summits because yeah. that's kind of not relevant. That you know you can have a lovely hike without like troubling to shoulder your way past all the other people that are just trying to hit the summit. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's incredible how many people, and I've said this before as well on, on vlogs and whatever that they just. They're bagging, they're bagging the peaks, you know, and they're missing some amazing features of the mountain because they're just so focused on the next thing, yeah. And just to spend a bit of time just moving around, up and down the mountain, and you can get some incredible sights and obviously photographs as well, yeah. When I was, when I was talking a minute ago about the hike, and, and I wasn't necessarily, when I said you enjoy it, or is it the hike? I wasn't saying, I'm not going to let this go. I wasn't saying, is it the hike or the photo? What I meant to, what, how, what I'm saying is, is I hate to say this because I've got a completely different mindset, but you can't enjoy the walking bit. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the bit you love. Yeah. But it's hard work. It's... I know, but it's, it's meant to be hard work. I mean, when I, when I done that ridge last weekend, I must admit, I, I went over the ridge line. It was Brown Pike, Buck Pike, Dow Crag. Yeah. And then I had to get to Brim Fell. So I, I kind of, the, the elevation was going up and up and up. But then you get to a certain point where you have to come r right the way down yeah. before you go back up again. And I must admit, when I, when I stood on top of the ridge line and I looked down thinking I've got to go right down into that kind of valley before yeah. I come back up again. Got horse, yeah. I, I wasn't particularly <laughs> looking forward to it, but it didn't bother me. You know, I, yeah. I, I wish it was on a flat plateau, you know, because because <laughs> I've done such a, a high climb anyway. Yeah. It but, is quite you know, soul destroying when you when you, you, <laughs> you have to go down to come back up and down yeah. again. And up. Yeah. Yeah. But, but when you when you're doing that up and up and up and up and you get to the top I get that, and you go, oh, my God, look at what I've just done. Look at the views. It's amazing. But I can't imagine, like, I've, I mean, I have a completely different mindset, but I've never walked up even any kind of hill and gone, oh, this is great. Oh, look at me walking. I mean, I'm not literally going, how much further to the top? I, I, must, to admit, I must admit, when I'm, when I'm guiding, the one thing that visitors have a real problem with is false summits. Oh, because you, you yeah. get, and, and they're thinking, oh, I thought that was it. And then, you yeah. know, oh, yeah, there's another false summit, another 100 metres <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> just I watch them die inside. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, 
it's anything active, Gary, isn't it? Running, cycling, they're exactly the same. Run, people, running. Pe- people love running, running and cycling. <laughs> running. Seriously. <laughs> running, though. I mean, I, when, I, when I was younger and I used to play football, I used to do a daily run, right? And I used to hate every single second of it. There was no point where I went, oh, this is, look, this is great. I'm loving this run. I just used to think, I've got to do this because otherwise I won't get in the football team. But it's, I just can't see the point. I mean, I get the point of, all right, I'm going on a hike up a hill, yeah, or up a mountain, and when I get there, the, the views are going to be absolutely stunning, right? They're going to be amazing, and it's going to be fantastic. And even on the way up, like, I can stop here, and oh, there's yeah. a beautiful shot there, and there's a beautiful shot there. But none of those steps, I don't take any one of those steps going, this is great. I'm, like, taking these steps going, up. this is killing me. I can feel everything burning. I don't want to do it anymore. Please let it stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. It's like literally yesterday, I went down. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was yesterday. Right? I went down into Snake Woodlands. And if anyone's ever been there, it's the piddliest little step, little track down into the woodlands. Then you get to the thing. It's about a 20 minute walk to the waterfall. And I walked down this piddly little thing and I thought, I'm going to be absolutely f-ed walking back up. <laughs> And it was nothing. It was like, I don't know, a, tw- a 40 foot elevation or something. And I thought, I'm going to be absolute, I'm going to have to stop four times on the way back up. <laughs> and I but just what, thought, what, why what am I doing you, this? What, I know it sounds crazy, but what you need to do is learn how to walk. I know. And I mean, no, see, I'm serious because I know that when I first started like, hiking, it was almost. I wanted to get to the top almost as quickly as possible or almost the same speed as I walk normally. Why yeah. wouldn't you? And, you? and you can't. You have to walk. You, you, you have to walk whatever suits you and, and, and slow and steady to get to the top. Yeah. And if you do that, the hike is so enjoyable. If you forget about how long it's going to take and you just walk at your own pace, you stop when you want to stop, you carry on again... Uh, you, It'd be Christmas, it, mate. It'd be Christmas. I would start. <laughs> I would start walking up cat bells in in June, and it'd be snow on top by the time I got there. <laughs> That's how long yeah. it would take. And and yeah. and even then, you know, hopefully there'd be an ice cream van halfway up. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've I've got to say that I do agree with the guys. I've. I've, the only hike I can say I've ever done, and I guess it was quite a big hike, was Snowden a couple of years ago when I when I came, and to do that was clearly huge for me, and it was a great day because I had my boys with me. But looking back on it now, I can see the buzz because yeah. you know you, you're thinking of what you achieved and the journey and what you saw and what you experienced at the time, and you think, yeah, I really understand why people want to do that. And I would do it again, absolutely. I, I, you know, I'd be probably knackered because I'm getting older and older as years go on and you're not getting any fitter. But I get the experience and I get what you've achieved by doing, what, what, you know, by doing that hike yeah. and want to do it again. So I do get it because yeah. I've done it. But there's also the biochemistry of endorphins. Mm. I mean, you know, it, it, an awful lot of people that do <laughs> physical exercise enjoy it because they get that rush from can, it. Can you get those mm. from eating chips? <laughs> I was going to say, you get the biochemistry uh, bit from the alcohol at the end as well, the pint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the chip. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best pint you've ever had, that, that it first is. one. Oh, is. yeah. But, but I mean, yeah. I, I had the buzz. I had the buzz of walking up Chrome Hill. Right, which is nothing compared <laughs> to you guys, right? But I had the buzz of walking up Chrome Hill once I'd got halfway up. I didn't go any further. Once I got halfway up, <laughs> but on the way up, I needed to be sick three times. <laughs> so it's like afterwards, I go, oh, do you remember when I went up Chrome Hill? I think to myself, oh, do you remember when you went up Chrome Hill? Wasn't it a lovely view? And I thought, yes, it was. But while I'm going up there, I'm like, I just want to die. I want to leave me here to die. I mean, I went up there with a guy... Um, who was who was, a, who was a runner, fell runner, right? And and I I had yeah, about well, that's five, not a good combination, Gal. I had about I had about five pints the night before. I thought I'd be, I'd be all right. I'd be fine. It's a small hill. I went up there and I'm like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm like, I think there's some, I think I got a bug. <laughs> I was like, I just wanted to stop and be sick every every sort of five minutes. That was getting out of the car. <laughs> 
So I don't know. I, I, I'm 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 really killing the mood here with you. So we're not you, doing the pubcast does base camp then. <laughs> it depends where the, it depends what base camp you're talking about. Cut them off. <laughs> yeah, I could do probably do that. Yeah. So Can basically, we... you're saying. So the question was mountains or lakeside. So you're firmly <laughs> in lakeside. lakeside. Right. Yeah, the shopping centre. The shopping centre, yeah. <laughs> Where there's a subway. Yeah. <laughs> a press a manger. Specifically the food court in the shopping centre. Um, no, I, I love looking at photos from... I, I, Obviously, when I watch your stuff, Glenn, I'm like, well, you did one, I think it was Bowfell and Crinkle Crags, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and I just thought, that that's unreal. The stuff up there is unreal. I would love, I would love to take shots of that. And then I looked and thought, I actually looked at the route because you put all the routes on your, yeah. on your thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, what, just come. I can, come along. I, honestly, I would die. Next time you're up this way, give us a bell. And we'll go and do it. Oh. All of you. We'll go and do a walk. I tell you I'm what. I tell you what. I tell you what. We will do that. We will yeah. do. I will hold you to that, and we will do that. And but you're going to have to carry me down, <laughs> and possibly some of the way up. <laughs> I'll just get me my son up here. He can he can carry you down. Can Crinkle Crags does look amazing. I have to say. Oh, it is just yeah, mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. But it, there is a lot of up and down. That's the trouble. <laughs> But yeah, mind blowing. If, it, if, it, if they could fit a stanner or something, get a stanner stair lift. No, a stanner stair lift. <laughs> yeah, that would work. Or an ass. <laughs> but I, okay, yeah. let's, let's, let, I'm not even going to mention names when you say ass. When we go to, when we talk about, um, we were talking about lakeside or, or, or mountains, instead of looking at it from that way, what about aesthetically? So aesthetically, when you see a shot, a really good shot of a lake or a really good shot in the mountains do you have a preference there well i think what dave said a little while ago is is 100 percent correct uh, on the way to the, the, the lakes last weekend i just i just got to the southern end of coniston and i know that kind of end fairly well and i know that there was a, a, a this huge lay-by coming up mm. But the lake was just like a mirror. Wow. And the sun was just rising. So I just pulled over straight away and the composition was just there. It was an amazing reflection. And after that, I kind of made a cup of uh, a coffee and then the, the, the sun come up over the fell and it started to light up the trees. Yeah. So the lakeside, if you get the conditions and the light, they're fantastic to shoot. They really yeah. are. But without that... But without that combination, you could you could be there for hours and hours and still not get kind of one shot. Whereas perhaps when you're in the mountains, as Glenn was saying earlier, the conditions are constantly changing. The light is constantly changing. So if I had the if I had the pick of the two, again, a bit like Dave, I'd rather be up in the mountains because I think there's more options to get a yeah. to get to get more photos. So, so two things from that we're saying: James Burns finds it easier. That's why he's looked upon as a good photographer because there's more to take. And um, secondly, did you want to put a shout out for this canoeist talking about that, Darren? Yeah, well, I, I put it out on on Twitter, um, and I th I can't what it is now. It's got I think it's been retweeted four hundred times or something, um, and and still no one has actually come back to me. Um, but it, it was, I think if that was me and someone had taken a photo of me and then very still conditions, I think I would like that photo. So, um, so are you going to print it and frame it for him? I was going to, for her, I was going to print her. it. I was, was going to say, just, it's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't um, mind that on my wall alongside this. Yeah, I wasn't going to frame it, but I was going to print it and, and put it in, you know, and, and send it off to her. But obviously... Yeah. Nobody seems to know who she is. She is the Scarlet Pimpernel at the moment. Well, we'll pop a picture up here as well. And if anyone but watching the... 
Absolutely. On the other hand, though, if she's seen herself and she's thinking, oh, this old bloke wants me to get in touch, I don't know about that. That sounds <laughs> yeah, a bit dodgy. Exactly, yeah. He's taken a secret picture of me in a skin-tight Lycra top. Well, nah. what I was thinking, I was thinking, <laughs> oh, can you imagine if she bunked off work for a day? Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, also, does anybody it, yeah. know this, you know, this canoeist? <laughs> OK, so going back to this photo, is it a canoe... Or is it a kayak? Oh, it's a kayak. Right, OK. What's the difference? So I always thought a kayak was something you kind of kneel up in and you paddle on both sides. That was my idea of a kayak. Because Helen, she used to canoe for Britain. So that for, she, she went to the Junior World Games as a canoeist. Wow. And the canoe, that she was, a K, she was in a K1, which is a, or, or a K2, which is a racing boat. But... What I was looking Shouldn't at it be on a the sea lake. One? Sea what? No. Mm. Why well, sea what? Oh, canoe. 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 Right, no. Yes. No. It's so it's so one what, for kayak. So what I was looking at was a, it looked like a slalom boat, which I thought it was a canoe. But a couple of people said it was a kayak. So what's the difference then? What is your uh, definition? Well, of I can tell you the difference cannot, is that one. a kayak you can have either way round, but a canoe you can't. <laughs> Google. I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Kayak is a palindrome, is what Exactly, you say. exactly. <laughs> You're not going to get a serious no, answer, Darren. No. So I, don't know. Know. I don't know. Move what on. I always thought, I, always thought I, I don't know. I always thought a kayak. I, I've, wor I've worked with a number of professional kayakers <laughs> for their IT, and, and so that's that I know they would call it a kayak. Why they would, I, I couldn't answer, but. They they use exactly the same sort of craft, and it was all kayaks. Okay. I'm sure somebody in the comments will, below will tell us. Yes, we yeah. like comments. Let us know. Right Let us in, know. put us straight. <laughs> well, that that picture that hopefully Gary just put up is that a canoe or yeah. is that a kayak? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So well, I tell you what, because we only got one episode tonight. When we yeah. start again on season two, if you yes. if you fancy coming back, please there, do. Then oh, please, yes, do. please, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'll be great. I uh, love we that. Will, yeah. We will definitely hold you to visiting yeah. the lakes and perhaps meeting up. If it's only meeting up for a, for a coffee, for a pint, or something, something yeah, yeah. A a coffee, pint, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that'd be great. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah, and, and it's a genuine offer. Please come up, you know, and we'll we'll do a walk. We'll yeah, I was going to say what what are you talking about, Darren. I, I want to walk. <laughs> you lazy. You're already there, mate. Aren't you? You're <laughs> already in training. Yeah. Every mm. step, I'm like, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a six Will pack you? with us. We all right. Will you turn up with your... I've already got one, mate. I've already got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, anyway, anyway, um, thank you so much. Would for... you hike in hot pants? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, would I? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Every pair of jeans is in hot pants for me. So, that's really <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway, back to where we were. I uh, thank is you so that, much. For, oh, it, well, what, no, no, no. Is this is the end, though, isn't it? This is the this end. This is the end. Yeah. This is the yeah. end. <laughs> this is the end until. Are we, we not start doing a blooper again. reel? Uh, are we not doing you know the sort of the, the outtakes the, the you know the bits you couldn't show? But no, at some point, space, we, we didn't show them oh, for no, a reason, no. though. Do you, do you know what? I'll be I'll be honest with you. I've I've looked I've looked and or I've thought about doing it. But that means I've got to watch every episode, or not even every episode, every recording all over again. And that's hours and hours and hours of that's drivel. That's a whole year. Yeah, that hours of drivel that yeah. I've got to go back through. Mm. And that's just <laughs> life, my stuff. Life's too short. Yeah. Mm. So this is the end. This is the end <laughs> of the photography podcast. <laughs> It is. It's, this is the end of the photography for, photography podcast. Well, the end, well, the end of season one, anyway. For, for now. Yeah. Um, there are going to be several episodes that we'll be releasing periodically over the summer because we managed to get some part twos out with some of the fantastic guests we've had on. We're definitely going to have Glenn back. A 100% we're going to have definitely. Glenn back. Okay. And definitely. another thing we it. need to say as well is Nick Livesey wants to come on, right? And I'd love to have him on. So we've definitely got to have Nick on at some point as well. Yeah. yeah, we've got to get a new bleep machine first. Yeah, no, we're definitely, but that'll be that'll be again in the autumn when we're back. So we're back. I think we're looking to come back hopefully September time. 
Um, but thank you so much for watching us over the last year. Thanks for commenting, good and bad. And we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much to Glenn for coming on this week. It's been absolutely fantastic. I've loved it. And um, we'll see you around at some point. So um, goodbye. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a wrap good. Oh, that's it that's it now Ooh, it's been like a lovely it. pandemic sort of a <laughs> <laughs> the relief on Gary's face no more editing for three or four months